couple of weeks ago, you dropped the phrase November to remember for the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> they had the little blip, of course, lost three in a row. But now, uh, when you look at their resume so far, they've done well against teams like St. Louis. They've done well against the Predators. We're seeing them in this road trip. Yes, they will face Predators again on the road. We also see them going to Washington. I don't know if you can count Pittsburgh as an NHL heavyweight anymore, but they've certainly got the star players. They, they have the Stanley Cups on the resume still. And then you have Edmonton at the end of the month. Uh, it, how telling is this month going to be over the next two weeks for the, the Vancouver Canucks? Traditionally, it's that U.S. Thanksgiving mark where we look and see where a team's at. I, I think it's changed recently. I just think there's so much more parity in the league that teams climb across that. We referenced St. Louis uh, earlier in the day. I, I look at this road trip. There aren't the back-to-backs. That's advantageous. The big thing with me is the Canucks are kind of like, uh, you know, it's just when you kind of write them off, they, they were winless in four games. They were blanked in two games out of four in the power play. They'd only scored five goals in a four-game stretch, and then they put up another five spot. Uh, I think, uh, is it sustainable? Uh, it is to a degree. We're now seeing uh, injuries creep in. I, I just think it's the way that they play. We talk a lot about the goals that they score, but it's all pressure. I mean, can you sustain a pressure type of attack where you're forcing teams to make mistakes, uh, where your, your goals aren't necessarily coming off the rush? That's difficult to do, but I think every time we've kind of written, not written the team off, but said, this is it. This is not going to be in November to remember. Uh, they have a way of, of, of changing the narrative on them. So uh, I think that's what's different about this team than a year ago. Uh, it's better. It's deeper. Uh, can it stay healthy? Uh, do you think this team matches up well, not just against the best teams in in the NHL, but specifically in the West? Like, where does this team sit for you? Yeah, it, it's going to be a story that will play out o over the duration of this season. Right, right now, fine. Um, and and I, I just think this NHL schedule is a different animal this year. I just see so much quality and so much depth. You might throw out Los Angeles in the West, but, but everybody else on a night-in, night-out basis. I mean, Dallas is coming in here on Thursday. You know, they, they, we used to make jokes about Thursday night games against Dallas in November. It, it's huge for the It's not huge, but it's a significant game for the Canucks. Colorado's coming right back. They're going to be chasing Colorado uh, all year. And you just look at, at as, as the schedule evolves, these games are going to be there every two nights. It's going to be a test. It's going to be an examination of their depth, of their results of their preparation, of their special teams, of their goaltending, of their first line, of their fourth line, all the way through. And that's why I think it's going to be such a compelling regular season. I'm really looking forward to the Oilers game for the sole reason. I know you were just in Chicago, but there was all this romanticism around that game in that, you know, the teams met three times in the playoffs and those teams hated each other and the fans got up for that game. Man, we have over the last four years here been excited about a singular player coming to town rather than two teams that actually dislike yep. each other. And I look at the Oilers and the fact that they're finally looking like they're developing they're in the same division as the Canucks. Two young sets of players. I'm just hoping the Canucks can develop some sort of a rivalry with another team to say, hey, that's a big game because you want to see them both go well, out. I, I, this is the way I look at that division. The, the, the Canucks have to finish ahead of one of either Edmonton or Arizona and probably have to finish both if they're going to make the playoffs. And that's why, I mean, Ed Edmonton uh, probably surprised a lot of people, but if you follow Dave Tippett's career, he's just he's brought order and structure to a team that has all the star power in the world. So I think Calgary's a wild card uh, in, in that mix. I think the Flames are a better team than they've shown, but we're already seeing Bill Peters doing that rough and gruff thing of calling out his star players, especially Monaghan and Goudreau. And, and you always have to reach those two players on some level in Calgary. Mm -hmm. If there's a disconnect, things start to go south. I think Calgary's a wild card uh, in that team. I, I think I'm going to give the division to, to Vegas, and let's see what happens out of that. But you want to be in the two or three hole. You don't want to get into that wild card scenario where you're, where you're playing a top seed. Great stuff, gentlemen. Again, you can subscribe to our podcast uh, at The White Towel through Apple Podcasts. You get our stories, videos, podcasts here all year.